What's up everyone? Today I'm in Tikal, the capital of the ancient Mayan civilization. I'm here with Caesar, a local guy from New York. He's been living in Guatemala for 29 years now. We're going to take you all on a tour of the ruins and offer a little historical rundown of one of the most amazing destinations in Central America. Visiting Tikal is typically a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I know the next time I get to see this place will probably be on the Discovery Channel. The biodiversity here is extremely unique, and for that reason, it's only appropriate that we begin by introducing the Seba Pentandra tree. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, around the world I have to say, because now technology has advanced in whoa, alarming manner. It's actually dehumanizing us. But anyways, we're here in the uh, north end of Guatemala, uh, the land of the eternal spring. We are in the heart of the Maya world known as Tikal. But to understand its development from 600 years before Christ to what it's believed that it was its downfall, mind you, downfall, no disappearance, 900 after Christ, we have to talk about what they believed in to be able to relate the monuments to this, okay? Because this is what they were trying to do, embody the heavens at all costs. And what better way than to do that with this beautiful specimen of a tree known as Seba Pentandra. This to the Maya would have penetrated nine levels of underworld, the trunk representing our world and the branches supporting 13 celestial levels of worlds. I mean, Jack and the Beanstalk, cut short, guys. Welcome, my name is Caesar. Let's continue it on. Out of all the tourist hotspots I've been to, I'd have to say Tikal is one of the more inaccessible. It's not that easy to get out here. First you have to fly into Guatemala City, then from Guatemala City you have to fly into Flores, and from Flores you need to take either a taxi or a bus to the ruins, which is roughly an hour and 15 minutes. But just seeing these huge temples and the engravings and the pyramids really makes you wonder what life was like here a thousand years ago. And now we are in the southeast corner of the heart of Tikal, which by the way has six square miles, okay? And this is known as Palace of the Vertical Grooves. It's just the architectural style that was implemented. It's a low, long lying building, as you would see. And uh, you will see one chamber with that, you've seen them all. By that I mean very uniform because these guys, apart from being able to reach the heavens, they had uh, structural limitation, but you have to see it from the inside of the building because they didn't have the arch as that of the Romans. They had this, the Corvo vault. And by the way, now that we're talking about the structure, let's talk about where the stone came from to build this structure. You thought I had to send you a couple of miles away? No, you wouldn't be back. I wouldn't be back. They'd probably be promising a much better life out there. So, these cavities were turned into quarries. Folks, quarries. And don't think that you're gonna have uh, uh, a metal blade. No, you're gonna have a blade made out of a semi-precious stone. The semi-precious stones that are able to be obtained in a karstic area are flint, chert, firestone, silex, okay? And uh, there was harder stones found to have been used as tools, jade, seven point hard stone, but that was obtained from the commercial trade within the mentioned surface of the Maya realms. We also have uh, tensions in tectonic plates. That's where you get jade, like in Burma, San Andreas Fault also provides jade, okay? So this at one time, you have to take away the vegetation and uh, realize that they lined it with cement to retain millions of gallons of water. And you're asking Caesar, that's fine. How do they deal with contamination? Oh my word. The first echo filter in Central America, quartz and zeolite, pulverized. If you at home have a magnifying glass, go find you some of this and look at it. It's a cage-like looking structure and it'll act like a magnet once you throw it into a body of water. The first echo filter. Who else did this around the world? The Romans. 
Tikal really is a place where nature and archaeology intertwine nicely. The Mayans were arguably one of the most advanced civilizations of their time. They were masters of astronomy and engineering, and they had a water filtration system on par with today's standards. Even out here in the rainforest, which doesn't naturally hold water, they were able to construct these enormous reservoirs which were crucial to their survival. All right, folks, uh, we've been jumping uh, from theme to theme and, you know, from corner to corner. Right now, we are on the south end, uh, south end of the heart of Tikal. We were just touching up on a quarry. Uh, yeah, the quarry had to be nearby. Uh, a little later in this recording, you're going to see behind you have a big cavity. That's where millions of tons were extracted to build this city, guys. I've been talking about this for 29 years and it still puts my hairs on end, you know what I mean? The social organization. I mean, everything was nearby, but still, you know what I mean? This is about 180 feet uh, story building and mind you, very steep. Apart from having religious and astronomical functions, it would have served as a big channeling system for water. If you wish, you can follow along right here. It'll take us to where the water still runs into. I mean, hydraulic engineering principles per se. You gotta give it to them. We think we're top of the line. No, we're not. This is where the water would have been retained, folks. But remember, I said earlier in this recording, you gotta take away the vegetation. They lined it with mortar derived from the uh, white powder that's extracted from the limestone after you burn Tons of trees, folks. Okay, so if you look at this line right here of stone, let's bring the camera around here and show them how it edges out along the road. To the untrained eye, that may not mean a whole lot, but this was actually by design. And the Mayans did this to help the water filter off. And if you look right here, there's a slope. The area kind of tapers off and it runs into this reservoir area and that's how they would contain water because the problem here in this part of the country is that water cannot be contained in a natural manner. There's actually troughs positioned all throughout this jungle for the animals because that's what they need to survive. But I gotta tell you, these people knew how to bring back cement from the limestone. People at home, you know about that, the kilns, the gathering of the stone, but you gotta cut the forest. Now talk about the mixture of lime with corn in the yeah. process of limestone. Uh, you have to mix the white powder substance, which is lime that you get from uh, heating the limestone itself. You gotta boil it into the corn. Uh, Mom, grandma, you know about that. If you don't put that lime into that, you're gonna have stomach aches and you're gonna suffer uh, pellagra, okay? Which is really three illnesses all in one that start with a D and they have to do with dermatitis, uh, chronic diarrhea and dementia, okay, so. Oh, and I gotta add that the enamel on your teeth will be washed away because the lime hits on your teeth. Yeah, hmm. ladies and gentlemen, now we're found in the heart of uh, Tikal, of course, and what we're doing, uh, viewing behind us, to me, it's the most holiest place in town. What do I mean by that? This is an area that it all began, the city itself. It's the burial ground for the rulers of Tikal. Uh, once you all get off your seat and come on with us and understand the past, we have to look at it from inside out. But before going uh, back into town, we wanted to talk about the historical events that were marked in these particular slabs of stone. By the way, these are known as stelas, uh, and on it you have a depiction of a victorious warrior, okay? And if you follow the uh, Leza, there is a captive belly down towards an altar, his leg up towards the sky, and there's no sign of cloning. The only thing you have on him, it's a rope dangling from its neck, and he has a knot right here. He's got a fist. He was what we call hog tied. So guys, this was not that peaceful philosophy, uh, you know, society that we were expected to find. These guys would have gone as far as cutting your head and extracting your heart still beating. But don't, you know, think that I'm generalizing, okay? If and when you broke a house rule or something of that nature, hey, you know how we do it. Temple number one, 
It's the main temple in the plaza here. Up on top, you can see the actual uh, structure itself. This pyramid contains nine platforms, which entail nine levels of the underworld. Now, the king would stand on top, and he would address the people in the plaza. Also, the priest would be up there where religious ceremonies would be conducted, and all kinds of uh, government matters would take place. Uh, folks, this monument that we're standing on was cut at the knees per se. Why? Well, the University of Pennsylvania was here in the 1950s and there was too much rain and they dug holes into the building in itself and they weakened it and it collapsed. But look what they found. They found one level of construction with a mask. By the way, this represents uh, God of the Sun, Kinicha Hau. The staircase that pertains to this building and then covered by tons of broken stone and another staircase and then so forth and so forth every 52 years, okay? Each level had a living God. They're a God of the sun and if you wish to come right around this turn. There. Look at that. That is God of the rain. This will be interpreted for Vikings Thor. Watch your back. Uh, Thor, okay? This is God of Rain. We know him as Cha'ak. And in Teotihuacan, it was known as Tlaloc, okay? Each region, each uh, city, each civilization would have added a different uh, representation of their own, if you wish, okay? But this one is within three levels of construction. Now, let me ask you this. What's the possibility of this being a Teotihuacan style structure? Uh, art of order. I would have to say that we have to go to Mundo Perdido, which is where we're heading towards. And interesting you ask that because uh, uh, it's never one civilization, right? I mean, come on guys, we know about the Egyptians, right? But what about the Nubians? How come we don't, you know, talk about them very much? Is it because of their color of the skin? I don't know. But here, uh, Teotihuacan has to be talked about when you talk about Tikal. It's believed, according to Linda Shuli, the best epigrapher in the field, rest her soul, and others, that the 16th of uh, January, 378 years of our times, uh, the Teotihuacans made their triumph entry into Tikal and sent our ruler into deep waters, if you wish. And then uh, there was a fusion that lasted for about five, six hundred years. And yes, we have buildings that have that architectural style from Teotihuacan. It's called Talud Tablero, panel and slope, and it normally has goggled eyes of Tlaloc, God of Rain, God of War, and a butterfly symbol that both have the same significance. But that would have to be in Mundo Perdido, and also south of the central Acropolis, which is adjacent to Temple One and a big public market. Interpreting this Teotihuacan structure probably as an embassy of some sort. I was going to ask, did it have anything to do with surveillance or occupation? Probably, probably. But remember that this is a big puzzle, you know what I mean? And uh, Teotihuacan fell before the classic Mayas did. They continued on. Uh, but at the beginning it might have been uh, somewhat of a taking over, but then it became a fusion, you know? And uh, it lasted for five or uh, six hundred years, but it toppled down. Okay, so what is the difference between, like, these people that are supposedly direct descendants of the ancient Mayas that come here and put on a show, and people like you and just average Joes in Guatemala? Because aren't they all technically descendants of the Maya in some way, shape, or form? That's a good question you got, and I got an answer like this. I'm a mestizo, folks. I'm a mixture of Spanish and uh, indigenous blood. These people are Maya, you see? And uh, I don't practice the religion. I was brought up evangelical. And don't be surprised if some of these people, not all of them, but after they conduct a somewhat of a ceremony, they'll do this before they leave the premises. Why? Because it, they're Mayans, but they're descendants of the Mayas of the 16th century. See? Careful on that. When the Spaniards came about, this time frame had long stopped to exist, and whatever information, they took it to the graves. And whatever information was still present, 
the Spaniards, they destroyed it. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving us the grand tour. Your expertise has come in very handy for this video, I'm sure. All the viewers are going to love it. Well, all I can say to all the viewers at home, you know, lock and load, uh, come south of the border, you know what I mean? But please, please, wait till you get here, you know, and then you decide what you might want to do. You know, we'll fill in the needs and gaps and whatever. It's been a pleasure uh, to have served you and other people at home, okay? Remember, but this is just a sneak preview, okay? Everything else is still covered by vegetation. Thank you for coming down to the show. Gracias.